Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon everyone. Welcome back with me, Mr. Asep. In this meeting, we are going to continue the lesson of uh, Curriculum and Material Development 1. We continue the lesson from the previous meeting. Last meeting, we were focusing on the, the center of curriculums, starting from the needs analysis and also the environment. In this meeting, we'll be focusing on the principles, okay? We'll be talking about 20 principles of language teaching with me, Mr. Asep Budiman. Okay, in the 20 principles of language teaching, uh, I took from Nation and Makalasa 2010 about language curriculum design. It will be three divisions on the center of curriculums which have the certain goals. The first one is the content and sequencing. And after that, we also focus on the format and presentations. And the last one, we have monitoring and assessment. We call it 20 principles of language teaching because the total numbers of each categories will be 20. Starting from the content and sequencing here, we have to highlight. From the content and sequencing, there will be eight categories. From the format and presentations, there are 10 categories. And the last one from monitoring and assessment, there will be about two things to consider. So if we total them, it will be 20 principles of language teaching. Okay. So there are three categories in uh, principles. Like, like we have in the needs analysis, we have needs, lacks, and also wants from the students. Okay. In this meeting, we will be focusing on the content and sequencing, which are eight categories. Okay. Let's check it one by one. In content and sequencing, there will be eight things we have to consider. The first one is the frequency. We have to highlight the frequency here. And the next one is strategies and autonomy, space retrieval, language system, keep moving forward, teachability, learning burden, and interference. Okay. So we have to consider much about these eight categories. First of all, let's discuss about the content and also the sequencing. Everyone, what do you know about content? An easy explanation about content is that content in language teaching, it will be the things, okay? The things which are going to study by the students or which are going to be taught by the teachers within the course. This is content. And when we talk about sequencing, it will be the order or the sequence. Sometimes people say also the chronological order of the content in the teaching learning process. So that's why we have first content and the second one is sequencing. How we order the content as the good ways to deliver to the students. Okay. Let's talk it one by one, everyone. Let's start and see. When we consider content and sequencing, the first things that come to our mind is frequency. What is frequency? A language course should provide the best possible coverage of language in use through the inclusions of items that occur frequently in the language. In this explanation of frequency, we have to highlight the phrase language in use. Okay, we have to highlight this ones language in use language in use language in use means the language which is usually used in the daily routines or daily conversations within the learning language or the language society okay and we have to teach the language in use which occur frequently okay frequently in in the language or learning language or teaching language so the frequent language news it means when we are discussing on when we are teaching language we have to firstly consider whether the language we are teaching or the items we are teaching is generally used in the daily conversation or daily routines in learning language for example 
Uh, the first thing we consider about teaching vocabulary. When we are going to teach vocabulary, first of all, that comes to our mind, there must be the frequent vocabulary use in learning language. It will be almost uh, incorrect if we teach like low frequency vocabulary, meaning that the vocabulary which are used, which are generally used in the conversations, we teach them. Nah, so in this case, it is a little bit uh, useless. But when we teach the vocabulary which are usually used in the daily conversations or daily teaching learning process, then it will be useful. Okay, we, we can draw conclusions in, in the frequency, uh, the learners will gain the things that they are having much effort on it. If they are studying simple present tense, they will directly use it in the daily conversations. This is the frequency because simple present tense is usually used in the daily conversation, for example. And when we talk about vocabulary, we also study or we also teach the frequent vocabulary. So this is the first things we need to consider about the content. Okay. So the content which is related to the language in use, which occur frequently in the society. Okay the strategies and autonomy when we talk about strategies and autonomy a language course should train learners in how to learn a language and how to monitor and be aware of their learnings okay in the contents we learn how to be able to learn language okay we are not only teaching them language then they can understand language we also need to teach them how they can learn language themselves so that's why they can be an independent and also effective language learners. This is actually based on the research about good language learners. They can find the strategies on how to learn language. So whether there is teacher or lecturer or not, they can learn the language themselves. It will be different from the general students, which depends on the teacher. If there's no teacher, they cannot study because they, they, they don't have the strategies to learn the language and also the autonomy. Okay. Based on this uh, strategy and autonomy, we can draw conclusions that we do not only teach them learn language, but teach also them how to learn the language themselves. Okay, how to learn language. Good. We also have the space retrieval. Learners should have an increase in the space. We have to highlight the word spaced here, everyone. Spaced. Repeated opportunities. To retrieve and give attention to wanted items in a variety of contexts. It means when we are teaching them language and also teaching them to learn language, they have to have also space to repeat, okay, to drill and also practice what they have got. This is according to the principles of practice makes perfect. Okay, after getting knowledge, they can practice themselves. So we have to give them space or time to rehearse or to practice what they have got and it also depends on the what is it the students ability to practice themselves it, it is in line with the Cahar's uh, suggestions that the importance of repetitions in learning new items in language teachings okay so we have to give them space to retrieve or to practice the language they give in a variety of contexts can be the games or other activities as long as the games or activities are related to the language items we are teaching. The next one is the language systems. About the content and sequencing, we also consider the language system. The language focus of a course needs to be on the generalizable features of the language. The generalizable features of language means some people that call it a formal language we are going to teach or we are going to discuss with the students. It is uh, in the bitable area, but the, the, what is, the things we have to pay attention here is that the language we are teaching is the formal language. As long as they learn formal language, they can also learn later on the informal language because the formal language can be acceptable both formally and also informally. It is different from informal language. When we are using informal language, it is not acceptable in the formal ways. Okay, so in the language system, we need to focus on the language items, aspects, language skills, and also strategies 
related to the generalizable features. We can generalize the features, not only to the certain ways, but also to the other ways. It also like when we are teaching new vocabulary, for example. When we are teaching vocabulary, we are not only teaching the meaning, but teaching the way to explain the meaning itself, the meaning the vocabulary. For example, when we teach about the word well, it can be interpreted in different meanings. In Indonesia, we call it sumur or dengan baik. So we have to relate it to the context, okay? So this is, we have to generalize the vocabulary, not only by the meaning. Is to keep moving forward. A language course should progressively cover useful language items, skills, and also strategies. Language items covers people say language aspects like vocabulary, uh, pronunciation, and also grammar. Sometimes uh, they cause also say discourse, okay? Include two language items. Next one is language skills, reading, listening, writing, and also speaking. And the strategies here, the strategies to deal with language items and also skills. What does it mean by keep moving forward? Means we are not only stacking on the, the items. After we are learning items, we can go on to the skills and how to deal with it in the strategies. For example, we talk about language items of uh, teaching grammar. Okay, teaching grammar. In teaching grammar, we have to move forward that in grammar can be used in certain skills. After we know about the language items, we move it to the skills here. For example, in speaking or in reading, in writing. After we relate to the skills, then we can also teach them the strategies to deal with grammar. For example, practice it in writing, for example, writing journals, articles or diary okay, this is the strategies because it depends on the learners uh, strategies as well like learners language learning style okay so after teaching language items we deal it with skills and also related to the strategies how to cope with skills also items okay so we have to keep moving forwards from item skills to strategies okay we are not only stacking on the items fully concentrated on the items without skills and also strategies or it's also incorrect if we say we focus on the skills but like re reading we focus on reading writing listening and also speaking but we neglect the strategies how to deal with speaking for example when we want to talk about speaking skill the way or the strategies to deal with speaking skill is like by having conversations or by having english community something like that this is strategies to deal with the skills okay Teachability. The teaching of language items should take account of the most favorable sequencing of these items and should take account of when the learners are most ready to learn them. Okay, in this explanation, we have to also underline the word teachability. It depends on the also teachers and also the students, whether the teachers can teach the items and also the students, whether they are ready to learn the items or not. Okay, the teachability are very general ways of understanding. Like, in the form of sequencing, the items should be carefully planned so that the items are closely related each other to the other items. And we also consider about the learners. Are the learners or are the students ready to learn the items or not? So we have to also consider the student's ability. For example, when we are teaching uh, elementary, junior high school, and university, it will be different. If in the elementary or junior high school we learn the simple present tense first, then it is teachable. But in the university, when we begin with like the in the for example in elementary school, we begin with past perfect continuous tense it will be uh, incorrect because they are not ready we have to also consider the the students readiness to learn the certain items okay it is not always about the, the students or the teachers like oh i'm the teachers i'm ready to teach these items present perfect continuous tense okay yes of course the teachers are ready but please consider the students whether the students are ready or not whether they have a uh, previously background knowledge or not Okay, so we have to consider the students and also the teacher's ability so that the sequence of items will be in a good order and have relationship with each other. Okay. The next one is 
increase the learning burden. The course should help learners make the most effective use of previous knowledge. Sometimes the use of the first language is also useful in learning language. For example, the structure of subject, verbs, objects in all language, they have the same structure. We can use the background, the background knowledge of learning the previous language. Okay. Some experts say that the, the, the learner's first language or mother language, mother tongue, is also useful to learn language, to learn the foreign or second language. So do not always neglect the first language because it is also useful in learning language. Okay, as long as it can help the teaching learning process of the foreign language, please also use the mother or the first language, like the structure and also some of the way of pronunciation, spelling, we can also make use of that, okay? And the last one, everyone, the eight aspect is interference. The items in a language course should be sequenced so that items which, which are learned together have a positive effect on each other for learning. Finally, inference effects are avoided. We have to underline here, should be sequenced, okay? The items in teaching language must be sequenced in order. And they can be learned together and also have positive effect each other of learning. We can draw conclusions that the order of the sequence of items or of the content in teaching language are very vital. For example, when we are teaching language, we teach English. In English, the basic tense, we have simple past tense, simple present, and simple future. Past goes to the previous event, present is uh, the current event, future is the next event, for example. Now, we have to make it in the good order. So, for example, past tense first, present, and also future. Then, they can be learned together to have relationship with each other. And there will be positive effect if there is question. Which one the previous one? Oh, this is past tense. Which one in the next one is present? Which one is the next one is the future? So there will be relationship if it is talking about tenses. And if we talk about the more specific one, for example, in simple present tense. In simple present tense, we can use, for example, the subject, singular subject, and plural subject. And we deal with the verbs, es or verb s, or without es, without S. And this is also must be in a good order so that they can uh, help each other in the teaching learning process and have positive effect. Finally, the interference effects are avoided. The interference effects means uh, the effects that they learn language previously, but they find it different from what they are learning right now. And this is the interference. So if we are making the sequence or the good order of teaching language, then the inter interference will be minimized. So that the teaching learning process will come uh, step work rather than backwards. Okay, thank you very much for coming and also joining my, call, my class and also see you in the next video. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.